Wow, this is really impressive. Here is what we have right now. It says like this. My trembling fingers stroke the soft skin along the length of your neck and under the perfect outline of your jaw, which tenses slightly when you smile. The rain pelts down on your face, just like a cheap movie making the illusion grow stronger. Let it pull us together and whisk us away. Not one day passes by that we don't hear some new and frightening news about artificial intelligence. It's getting better. It's getting closer to humans. Google's DeepMind AlphaGo artificial intelligence has defeated the world's number one Go player. An AI can now play the real-time strategy video game StarCraft II better than 99.8% of human players. We cannot but wonder if Go Champion is not safe with his black and white pebbles and if the teenagers' gaming careers are on the line, whose job is safe from automation? Aren't we all going to be replaced by a couple of neatly executed lines of code that will do our jobs better and faster than us? And how hard that might be? You're probably watching this video in your work time. Do you think artificial intelligence will do that? My job is also on the line. I'm writer and mathematician, and I have some basic Python programming skills. I teach mathematics at university, and it's the only matter of time when robot will actually replace me and do my job much better than me. At least it will not lose its composure once it hears uh, some dumb student questions again and again. Maybe I can find a job programming AIs with my math skills. But what about my other job? A writer, a novelist, a storyteller, a raconteur. It seems that it's quite easy uh, to be replaced by algorithmic prediction tools that are more prominent in our lives. It seems that artificial intelligence can easily track and understand this line of text. But is it that simple to generate a meaningful text, let alone one that can change people's lives? I wrote four books so far out of those three novels that got wider recognition and translation into other languages. In this episode, I will try to program AI to write my next novel. Hey, welcome to The Fabric of Life, a show where we try to fuse art and science to answer humanity's most difficult questions. And this week, let me take you on one fascinating dystopian adventure. But before we start this amazing adventure, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Every week I'm taking you on new trips to investigate more stories. And Portugal, Spain and Havana are coming next. The job of a novelist is hardly tangible. It eludes the definition. At the first glance, it looks quite simple. Type a couple of words into a coherent string that makes more or less sense then tell a story with that string of words. But it's actually much more complicated than this. A lot of people can type words, but very few can type, so they excite the reader, make the reader laugh and cry, make him remember his childhood, or even feel the scent of the past. That is not easy thing to do. On the other side, even the most advanced chatbots cannot hold a decent conversation, but AI systems are definitely getting better at generating the written word. There are thousands of different machine learning algorithms out there competing in different realms. It seems that when the goal is mathematically clear, for example winning the game of Go, machine learning can progress much faster and overcome the limitations of humans. But the goal of novel writing is not always clear, is it to entertain, to make a person be glued to the page for a really, really long time. Wait a second, why do we even write books? Writing a novel is a painful and messy process that takes up all of your free time, haunts you in the darkest hours of the night and generally culminates in a lot of tears over ever-growing pile of rejection letters. 
Every novelist will have to go through at least one and in some cases many times before they are published and since publication itself brings no guarantee of riches or platitudes, it's not unreasonable to ask what sort of a person would subject himself to such a thing. To put it even better, in the words of dystopian master George Orwell, he said, all writers are vain, selfish and lazy, and at the very bottom of their motives there lies a mystery. Writing a book is horrible, exhausting struggle, like a long bout of some painful illness. One would never undertake such a thing if they were not driven on by some demon whom one can neither resist nor understand. Only if we had an alive writer on our hands, maybe he can provide an answer for our curious souls. Well, I am a writer, I already told you that, but unfortunately I cannot tell you why people write, I can only tell you why I write. And I will go a little bit off screen play uh, on the rant here, because actually I want to tell you a story, and that story is how I became a writer. You see, when I was a child I was thinking that's probably the coolest job a man can do. I always imagined myself uh, writing in the future, but then something interesting happened as I you know, went along with my youth and with my life. I started seeing and recognizing stories that are almost alive. You see, they're kind of, you know, heating up and boiling inside me. They want it to come out. It was not a choice about should I write or not write. It's about like, uh, am I able to stop this story fully becoming alive? And then we come to something interesting, and that is a good mix between talent and learned skill. But one thought that often comes to my mind when finishing yet another novel is not how it will be accepted by the public or will it wow the critics, but should it really exist. People's lives are too short to read all the classics that are already written. I'm also behind on all the great books that I put on hold while writing mine. So why one more should exist? If one thing is true in this uncertain world is that life is too short to experience all the great art, especially books. So why would we employ AI to do such a rewarding yet mysterious task? Well, that didn't stop Andreas Ravsgad and Mikkel Thibault Luce, creative coders and digital artists, to start Books by AI, a publishing house specialized in only type of author non-human. The stories of those books, titles, descriptions and reviews of the books were generated using char RNN TensorFlow and training data from Amazon.com and Project Gutenberg. They sell their work on Amazon and yes, it's in print, hoping to find an audience that is actually human. And here is one interesting novel uh, titled Hell of the Seer written by AI-generated author called Bornander Halmond, has a really tempting description. This novel is about a deadly controversial story, but he doesn't have to be destroyed in his country. 
Despite everything, they find themselves betrayed by a secret and deadly conspiracy that threatens to stay with each American boyfriend. Sam begins to explore a conspiracy of responsibility to rescue the world that the, under a group of Americans to confront the next 30 minutes to have a great conspiracy that starts as a professional man has a conspiracy of death. Wow, I wish I came up with that idea. Thanks, AI. Encouraged by the fact that AI cannot take my precious creative job yet, I decided to test it for myself. Although I have some basic Python experience and my knowledge of rudimentary machine learning algorithms, quick research down the rabbit hole of different multi-layer recurrent neural networks for character level language models ensured me that I could spend weeks, if not months, trying to get it running smoothly. Luckily, Canadian engineer Adam King made a quite powerful website called TalkToTransformer.com that uses underlying technology coming from research lab OpenAI. In early 2019, OpenAI unveiled its AI language system GPT-2 and Talk to Transformer is slimmed down accessible version of the same technology which has been made accessible only to select scientists and journalists in the past. Only a couple days before completing this video, OpenAI announced an improved version of this AI language system called GPT-3, for which researchers say that the quality of text generated by GPT-3 is so high that it's difficult to distinguish from that written by human, which needless to say has both benefits and risks. So I decided to do something different this time, since I already have translation of my second novel, Night of Dead Dreams, in my possession, I decided to find my favorite passages and then uh, to feed the very beginning of every paragraph to this AI tool and let it generate story for itself. Maybe we will get something more refined and better than actually this novel that I wrote when I was 19, exactly 14 years ago. Maybe I will get a better novel that will finally give me fame and fortune that I actually deserve. Firstly, I will read you one passage from my novel and then I will see can AI do it better. I would be lying if I said that I'm not a little bit nervous right now. Wow, this is really impressive. Here is what we have right now. It says like this. My trembling fingers stroke the soft skin along the length of your neck and under the perfect outline of your jaw, which tenses slightly when you smile. The rain pelts down on your face, just like a cheap movie making the illusion grow stronger. Let it pull us together and whisk us away. I let myself run a careful hand like that of a silk concealer through your dark hair breathing in the luxurious smell. The streets are empty, abandoned buses lie in the streets diagonally dead and forgotten. The smog slowly starts to lift, taking with its parts of the grayness we don't need. This is really impressive uh, for somebody who is 19 years old. But you know what, I'm going to make this the very beginning of the episode, thinking that AI actually wrote this. You see how I'm messing with my audience? That will definitely not fire back. Okay, now let's see if AI can do it better. This is what we got. In that moment, I swear I could see every feature of your face again. I could be back in my room at the manor. Your hand sneaks around my waist, wrapping around me as your lips brush mine. Your breath blows? Hmm, this is strange. Let's continue. More input from me and more text from AI. I bet you never seen that, have you? The old buses? The ones that shut down and get wrapped up in a pile of scrap metal? I wish I could have watched you seeing them for the first time. You'll see soon that at the fundamental level the system doesn't understand language or the world at large. 
The text it generates has a surface level of coherence, but no long-term structure. When it writes stories, for example, characters appear and disappear at random with no consistency in their needs or actions. When it generates dialogue, conversations drift aimlessly from topic to topic. It gets more than few responses. It seems like a good luck, not skill. More than often, we are witnessing some complete nonsense like this. When the bone is just barely alive, completely alive, all alive, just not completely the way it was when it. Here is another favorite of mine, actually main character is waking up in unknown hotel in Budapest and it goes something like this. I waited. After a while, my eyes open and the first thing I see are my hands gripping the hotel sheets, pulling them over my sweaty face. My body is frozen in spasm of fear, my legs are shaking. I throw the covers off with some difficulty and push them to the floor. My once white socks are now dirty and gray and I remind myself that I haven't changed them since we left. Slowly blood flows back into my numb parts of the body. My jeans are wrinkled and worn. I stare at the golden pattern and the hotel carpet and I realize that we have no idea how long I slept. That moment, I take in the fact that in a couple of seconds I'd heard the first blood coloring scream in the hallway in front of my door. I close my eyes and breathe in the cold air coming from open window. A storm was on its way. But let's backtrack a couple of days. Because the deadly screams I would hear in the hallway, the ones that I dreamt just moments before, weren't really that interesting compared all to that had been going on in the last week. No matter how much I tried to push AI to give me the ominous horror vibes, all I got was an old couple arguing in a hotel room. Conversations are drifting apart and new characters are popping in and out of the frame. This is really disappointing, I would say. It's not really coherent. Uh, this would make my editor really angry, confused. Writing is a gift that is really hard to teach humans, let alone complex algorithms. Centuries will pass until we understand what really makes a great story timeless. For now, my job is safe. Telling stories is deeply human experience, something that machines will never be able to understand, because being human means evolving together with our world and machines that help us in our everyday life and together with limitations that our civilization imposes to us. Reading books that we love is like having a helping hand from a person that didn't necessarily live in the same time as you and didn't really know you, but knows exactly what you're going through. Same like finding true love, tragedy or luck, it's deeply unique to us. And it all happens by chance. Hi there, Vladislav Radak again here. Thank you for sticking with me until the very end of this episode. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel because every week I'm taking you on new and amazing adventures. Next week I'm going to take you to Italy to see why we as humans are drinking coffee. Until then, stay tuned and curious and don't forget, libraries still exist. <laughs>